And we're live. Oh, hello everybody. Okay. And um, welcome back to another episode of... Oh, I'm hearing myself twice. Come on. That quick thing. Let's see. Why you say that? I need to see if everything else works properly. <laughs> <laughs> it should be good. Um... <laughs> I could hear I could hear our voices over the stream, so yeah, you should be fine. Don't worry about it. Well, hello everybody. Welcome to another episode of the Dojo. Thank you, Ubisoft Connect service. Popping up three different notifications on my PC. That's super handy. Um, we are going to be covering the changes in this season, year six, season three, because released with a patch that changes a lot of heroes. So we're going to be going over that. With me today, I'm the Filthy Spaniard. With me today is my good friend and colleague, Normie. One of the top competitive players in the game, if not the top competitive player in the game. Indeed. Hello. Yeah, yeah. He's very, very modest as well. Thank you, Easy Anti, for popping up. Goodness gracious. I am not in my normal domicile at the moment. I'm staying with my father-in-law, and if my PC... And I'm using uh, my, my wife's laptop, so... Uh, Better patience with, uh, with with things not necessarily working as intended by just loading. It's just taking a sweet old time to load up. But anyway, we can talk a little bit about about the what the patch has brought to to us. Um, this season's called the Demon Dagger, and what's very spooky is that there are lots and lots of changes to lots of heroes in this patch. I think. How many? How many? How many heroes? Do you know the number? The number of heroes have been have been given small tweaks and quality of, up, of life updates this time. Normally, I mean, like. Well, let's see. We have we have Lobby and we have PK. About half, I'd say. So. Yeah. Lobby, uh, PK, Sand, PK, Glad, BP, Lucia, Griffin. So pretty much the entire Nightcast minus. Well, all of the knights except Conqueror got something. Um, got something. Yeah, he got his yeah, he, well, he's got his side lights sped up to 500 ms. Oh wow, big and change. the zone. Yeah, I know, right? And there's like, well, he also got actually he did get a big change with the. Well, we'll get onto that. Um, Zerka, Highlander, Yorm, War Warlord, Valk's got the testing grounds active at the moment, which we're not going to be talking about today, by the way, guys. We're going to be talking about the patch changes. Um, so that there's there's currently a testing grounds on for TND and Valkyrie, as well as some changes to counter car breaks. We're not going to be covering that in this session because uh, we, we're waiting for, like, to gain more opinions of the testing ground stuff, and we'll cover that next week. Um, maybe at the last day of the testing grounds, or maybe on um, uh, next Saturday. Yet to work it out. Um, so, yeah, Valka didn't get any changes though in this patch, but Salmon did. Uh, Kensei, Orochi, Hitakiri, Shigoki, Nabushi, Aramusha, Kyoshin. Candy again in the testing grounds. Jay didn't get anything. Nusha did. Shanhu did. Yeah. And okay, so that is that's the majority of the cast, right? It's only a handful of characters that didn't get any changes, yep. which is kind of bonkers, really. Given this is a this is the patch that people have been asking for for years, which is to say an update that tweaks and, and improves a bunch of characters. Oh God! And I just, I just opened the game and I heard, and there is no escape. Really loudly in my ear. <laughs> mm. Cinematic. Um, though I won't be able to see the chat when I've got the game open because I don't have two monitors with me today. <laughs> so, uh, normally, if you can yeah, see no the way. chat and if you I see questions it. that are relevant, yeah, just let let them know. Um, so yeah, it's it's actually hopefully this is the first of a new trend in this in this game of having frequent quality of life updates. Or little things that need changing. So a lot of these changes are not dramatic. There are some... Some of them have pretty dramatic consequences, but they aren't full reworks by any means. They are tend to be quite small, and a lot of the characters that we've mentioned only had a minute change, which is to... Well, a minute but, but useful change, which is the change to the zone stamina costs. Um, and stamina costs of one or two moves, that kind of thing. But these are things that we... That, I mean... We've had, in the past, we've had to wait until there's a full rework for these characters, for any sm changes that aren't nerfs, essentially, to come. So this is really, really good. At least I'm really enthused by it, um, and I hope that it is the first of 
well, the game volume is really loud, but the, the first of uh, a trend, and then we're going to see more of these kind of small tweaks to, um, so I can't basically can't talk and do and do things at the same time, so I'm just change, lowering the volume of my game. Um, hope it is the first of a series of changes of, of, of these patches that we'll see. Um, anyway, that's my that's my hope. Um, what do you think, Normie? Are you, are you pleased with this patch overall? Well, I am very pleased. Uh, I do have to say I'm more excited uh, about talking about the DG when that comes around. But uh, overall, I think from uh, general changes, I don't think there's anything that's bad. Yeah, I I can't think of a single thing that I don't like about this patch. I'm struggling to think. Yeah, struggling to think about anything. I mean, there's a few changes in the testing grounds that I'm not like super happy with, and I would rather than be slightly different. But the actual Patches themselves, uh, uh, the patch itself is amazing. Right, let me let me invite you, Normie. Um, I'm not sure if we're gonna have Freeze and Nutella or anybody else oh, come and join us. Is sick with COVID. So. Yeah, Nutella's got COVID, so he probably won't want to join. Also, but if you know, if any of them, the screen goes black like that for people wondering. I'm just all tabbed, accepting an invite, so don't worry about it. Yeah, I to um. Medjay kind of dead now. No, Medjay is fine. Uh, he's felt still the same. He's not had any. Medjay hasn't had any changes, but great. He's got a giant pot thing. Wait, wait. All right. Well, we are going to. What we're going to do is go over. We'll just load up the characters, I guess, one by one in training mode and talk about what the changes they have had and the impact of them. But the first one, I think we should do. Um, we should. Uh, kind of nice. If we have three, but we'll, let's let's do it with. Um, we'll go in, we'll start up a brawl with a bot, and that will allow me to demonstrate the changes to Warden and what um, has, has been improved there. Why is this still this so is loud? Gonna go, is the bot going to spam me? <laughs> the bot is going to spam me. I'll set it to be some kind of, um, I'll set it to a, a, t a level one bot that tends to be quite, um, docile. Dosa, exactly, yeah. That's the word I'm looking for. Brawl, a bot. I mean, we can Stick do one. two at a time. Like, show two characters at a time. Exactly, so I'm going to have you go on PK, and that's why, this is why I want to do this one so we can put oh, yeah. on this PK. one. I don't even know what PK goes, so... <laughs> well, it's okay, you'll pick the crossbow um, feet. That's basically the main thing I want to show with, with PK, and then we can... Um, Select um, da, 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 da. Get the build of it, build in, which is the nicest well, one. Well, Span says this up. I can give some a uh, little bit of like early opinions uh, on the TG and the two heroes that got reworked, which are Valk and Tiandi. Uh, there have been screens with them. Pro players have been playing, casual players have been playing, and we've gathered some opinions from people. Um, mostly mixed, I do have to say, Valk. A lot of people say Valk has a lot of potential and could be really strong. But I myself struggle a bit with, you know, realizing that because uh, getting into the bash is a bit finicky. And people. Uh, you could go on um, Lord Ringer's team. Uh, like characters with neutral bashes can kind of shut you down uh, pretty easily. But um, Valk does have a lot of potential. I do think she needs a lot of changes. And um, Tiandi is actually the one that people are most. Uh, confused about because he seems to be meta material but at the same time not really so yeah it's a it's an interesting one there's there's like i think the there's a lot of nuance to be in, in the opinions of both of these testing around characters but i'm i'm excited in them it's certainly both of these reworks are really are looking like they have a lot of potential and looking really good as a sort of first step so if the feedback comes back from these this testing ground is good then hopefully we'll see the release versions soon with tweaks to these problem areas that the people have people have spotted um, anyway we'll talk about that next week i'm gonna go warden you go peacekeeper with your crossbow feet um, this is hopefully the we'll just do the change for let's talk about the change for warden first because um <laughs> you can do that before the before the enemy lawbringer kills me um <laughs> I am playing on this laptop with 30 frames a second, and it's a little bit scuffed. So actually, the, the enemy lawbringer is probably going to 
going to give me a, a real trouble that level one will bring a bot we'll you know how they are but yeah. for uh, opinions <laughs> on bps ub uh for Vulge B Vuln, uh, it has a lot of implications that people don't realize, but it makes his defense stronger uh, more than his offense. But uh, overall, on BP, uh, with the changes he got currently, I think I could safely say he is in a good state in all game modes yeah. across the board. Yeah, I'd agree with that. BP is definitely... Um, he was kind of just slightly off meta beforehand, and I would say he's like definitely potential for being meta pick now in 4v4s maybe not like first comp but because we're seeing sort of the conquest format be becoming more normal um i definitely think it's more like but we'll, we'll talk about bp when we get to bp <laughs> right now we've got warden so we're gonna, we'll go through along the cast and do it one by one um so warden's changes thank you i need to target you so i can external this uh lordbringer bot so the first change that warden has received is a change that many characters have received which is their zone attack now only costs in the warden's case only costs 30 stamina so warden's zone has very low recovery ow thank you so it's got very low recovery it's got really a very good hitbox pk zone actually hasn't changed stamina it's one of the few that haven't and of course it also leads directly into the shoulder bash so for Warden, this is a really nice change. It used to cost 60 salmon to use, and now it is yeah, uh, just 30. So, really nice. I mean, look at the hitbox on it. It's, it's a very good attack, so it's definitely an improvement for his team fighting. The other change he's had is that his same side, he's not sent his regular side lights now are 500 MS. They aren't free parries anymore. If you accidentally uh, throw the side light by accident, you're not going to have it Im immediately carried um for loads of damage so oh, don't 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 kill him yet because i need to, <laughs> uh, to use him for the demonstration of the next bit which is i'll kill him in a second though um so as, as well as lights not being six from s which is obviously a really just a freaking joke to have six from s lights um he has now got great thank you the other change is a change to his valiant breakthrough you see that? I could type. If you, give, you can revive the bot as well. Um, so you can now target switch Valiant Breakthrough during a dodge. And Valiant Breakthrough, as you know, has a ridiculously long range. I mean, not, maybe not that long, but, but it's actually a very, very long range. Actually, really, it's fast. It's heavy attack, so it's low risk goes straight into his bashes like everything does so at or into his ubs which again you can target switch this is actually a fairly major improvement for warden as a team fighter so team fighting as for warden is probably his biggest weakness but change to this that allows him to be much more unpredictable. I'm gonna execute him now so he's not being annoying. I mean, it's, it's a really, it's a really, really good change for Warden, and one I've been asking for for a long time. Um, I don't think it's gonna lift him into the meta or any by any means. He's still his main offense is still his shoulder bash, which is low and vulnerable to being peeled in team fights. His feats are still not. Uh, the best, but his and his hitboxes on his side heavies aren't amazing. I mean, they're not, they're not terrible anymore, but they aren't you know nothing special, like nothing like JJ or anything like that. Um, but this is definitely a big improvement for him as a team fighter. I th I'd say. Do you agree with that, Nomi? Or yeah, I mean, uh, he struggles a lot with uh, having mobility in team fights because while he did get his hitboxes buffed for his side heavies, obviously they were uh blockable before and now they're unblockable stuff like that his zone hitbox got improved now his zone stamina uh, cost got reduced all of that is just to help him be a bit more well-rounded uh his problem that is still here today but was even worse uh way back when he's just a very two-dimensional character you don't really have much in terms of team fights but now with changes like these uh he's probably gonna be a bit better yeah i think his role in team fights has always been somewhat at the edge of them like charging up 
the bash because obviously his shoulder bash has such long range is actually somewhat effective to sit out the team the edge of team fights and he's now got his his four dodge heavy's always been really good peel because again super long range fast does good damage is a heavy and everything um and his zone which has got great range and great hitbox he is oh sweetness apple crumbles just arrived <laughs> I, i'm on the random <laughs> just in, in bed <laughs> with a laptop um so sorry i'm being pinged as well uh so yeah this is actually i mean he's he's not got a team fighting kit but his team fights are going to be so much better now um because of all of the things that were holding him back in team fights and his inability to use his main kind of team fighting tools which were long range attacks effectively he now can do that so yeah i think this is a really good change for warden i mean he's still not a meta character by any means but it's certainly not going to be like i don't think it's me throwing the match in the same way as this kind of was in fours beforehand anyway the next thing we will talk about is that so the warden hasn't had you know, a huge number of changes but pk has had quite a lot of changes and the Biggest one, well, one of the, the ones that's relevant and why I picked this mode is uh, the crossbow feat has been changed. So you want to pop, pop me with the crossbow. As you can see, it still does 25 damage total, but instead of having um, all be that that all physical damage, now it, 10 of that is bleed damage, and it lasts a really long time. So 10 seconds of two with two per tick is a uh, you know it's a considerable amount of time, and it allows uh, Peacekeeper to access her uh, team fight her well the strong aspects of her, her kit which is her um, uh, unblockable finishers enhanced lights they say it's, a, it's a, again a, again a good change for her um, the, the the cooldown of um, crossbow is only 60 seconds I think so it's going to come online any, any second now as well and that's really handy for her too because she can use it multiple times in team fights the disadvantage of course is that She's going to have to get to her tier 3 to use it, and, and that's not always super easy as PK. Um, but let's go to training mode. Well, we can discuss the rest of her kit changes as well whilst we're here. The other big one is that her... Is this really the only only proper nerf in this in this whole testing, in this whole patch? Uh, is that PK's guard break damage has now gone down to 28 total instead of 38. So the last stab of that used to do... Uh, 18 damage total, so 2 plus 16 bleed, and now it only does 8, uh, 9 damage total. So it's uh, 8, 8, 10, I think. So yeah, get 10 damage total, 2 with 2 and then 8 bleed. So her GB damage has gone down, which is good because 38 damage was insane. Um, it, is, it was ridiculous, and it's now it's still high 28 damage for a, for a guard break punish is four damage more than what you'd expect from most characters but it's not insane so uh that's a very warranted nerf but it has been balanced out by other buffs to peacekeeper so the first one is that her um dagger cancel her, her like soft paint into top light has received has received a buff to its dodge cancels which it always had or well, has for a long time, but now you can dodge cancel after it after two, after 200 ms. Although to be honest, it does seem a little bit clunkier than that. Um, that doesn't seem quite as much, but in theory, and we'll, we'll get to testing ground uh, training ground in a moment. But that means it can you can avoid dodge attacks quite easily with it, and should give it more safety in team fights. Right, we'll we'll, we'll also switch to um, the training ground uh, training mode so we can show off the rest of the move move set stuff. Um, Peacekeeper. So, otherwise this Lawbringer is going to come for my ass again. Oh no, Lawbringer, why? I'll put you in the chat, see if whilst I'm loading up. Um, I can't how good their laptops are. Right. <laughs> yeah, my laptop's, well, this is my laptop, but it's not very good. It's got a graphics card though, so you know, it's, it can run the game, which is certainly better than, than not having that, so. Uh, yeah, so what do you think about the crossbow change, Normie? The crossbow change? Uh, well, we have sort of the same situation as um, the two throwing axes that we have in the game for Zerk and for Shaman, right? Zerk's is uh, 25 uh, head on damage and uh, Shaman's is all bleed. Again, yeah, Shaman's, I think it's uh, 5 Shaman's, and 20 bleed, yeah. Yeah, Shaman's uh, 
kit is based around bleed and same way pk's kit is based around bleed so just making the hero's kit tie into itself much better and without her unblockables and hand slides pk is really really bad so and anything other than one of that is so yeah all right i'm gonna switch to centurion um and you can stay as pk i pick my edgy centurion load out um yeah it's certainly it's certainly an improvement for her, and it's really nice to see them changing a feat just again feats for a long time don't seem to get buffed they've, they've there's a few, we've seen like occasional feet nerfs but we very rarely see a feet buff and very rarely a feet buff to buff a character's move set either um, and this is a like a really i think a really good change because it's very much in keeping with improves the character it's still she's still very lacking in team fights overall and there are definitely changes which i think could be improved um in particular her dodge heavies still have very long recoveries on them so you're very vulnerable to we can show that in a second. And I don't think her the dodge cancel that's on the dagger cancel also applies to all her bleed attacks. So I think it'd be quite nice if they the next step was to add the dodge cancel to deep gouge and her deflect and so on, which would give her a lot more mobility in team fights as well. Um, uh, I don't and... want to make a little thing here. Uh, they keep mm -hmm. buffing PK, as you've seen across the seasons. They keep buffing her slowly uh, with every other season. But they keep giving her stuff that uh, doesn't help her. Because what you're saying right now would be very helpful. But her main problem is very simple. You don't do anything in team fights in 4v4. You have little in terms no, of hitboxes yeah. and no tracking whatsoever. So. Well, they have actually, that was one of the things they have improved. They have improved the track, uh, forward tracking on her heavies. So you have more forward movement on your regular heavy attacks now, I think. Um, yeah, but that's from abysmal to normal. Uh, yeah, so, I mean, that's uh, she's, 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 I think she's very rare. She's not going to be a team fight specialist, I think, will be tricky for her. Um, but they have improved some aspects that do improve her team fights. So for starters, yeah, they've improved the range on her regular heavies i think it is so it used to be that if i was um if I was out of stamina and you threw me forward your heavy would miss or if you if i if i if i did a um right, yeah, it still does <laughs> i meant to say if uh, if i if i if you parry this um your heavy would often miss and now you at least can land a, like a light into heavy or a whereas before i think the light heavy would actually miss so you know, she's that's an improvement on on something. She also the her zone hitbox. The first one, the first hit has been improved. It's again, hard to see in a one v one, but the first first hitbox zone has improved. I still think on this they need to um, give her a zone like the old faint timing back, or at least move something to the maybe move, maybe move the dodge cancel to the old faint timing. Because if you if you throw your zone and then faint, normally you can see that the yeah, the faint only comes really late, which is obviously important to make the last hit actually work, but it was her best team fighting tool. That she had a fast, and it's not even that fast anymore, it's only 500 MS, and it's still 11 damage, which is weird. Um, but yeah, there's some things they can definitely be improving on this character, and hopefully will do still. Um, she has no external pressure in team fights at all. Um, personally, I think they should make her dagger cancel from top guard be unblockable. Um, from top top heavies because currently if you do a top heavy dagger cancel it's just parable at the same timing and does nothing but if it was unblockable then that's a little bit like you know um aramucha's label um ring the bell or other things and i think that would give her a lot more external pressure um and personally i would think that'd be a really good change but you know you know how it is um a lot of the changes we've seen this time around don't require any animate really any considerable animation changes or any moveset changes to the if you go into the menu and look at your moveset nothing will have changed on your characters apart from the few characters that have, have added moves which I, we'll talk about one of them now after we finish talking about peacekeeper so in general i think that might be a, like a limitation they have that if you think about it in terms of they add a new move or a new moveset property they have to change change the ui and they have to change that they have to change it for every translation of the game as well so it's significantly more difficult for them to do, um, timely and costly, presumably. So it makes sense that these changes have gone 
like for low hanging fruit, as it were. Hopefully we'll see some more changes in future that add moveset properties or even new moves. Um, for example, we've talked about Peacekeeper having like dodge cancels on her dagger cancel, but she doesn't have it on deep gouge anymore. Or, or, uh, deep gouge, I don't think. You just hit me with your... I mean, it's still quite a low recovery move in general, but it's not the same as the um, dagger cancel. So, uh, as I show now, with that with deep with that cancel, I think now you can't. You can probably deflect my dodge attack if you um, go if I dodge attack your deep gouge. Oh man, I think it's too slow. Only if you do it really early. But I can definitely avoid it. Plus, it's not undodgeable. Yeah. If it wasn't dodgeable, it would be easier, but yeah. you can at least avoid dodge attacks. You can avoid dodge attacks, which means that the mix-up... Oh, there we go. It means the mix-up is always going to be between... For the opponent, if you want to punish you, they have to go for a parry, which means they put themselves in PK's guard break mix-up, which is obviously super... Actually, it's still very strong. Do the same thing, but instead of dodge attacking, dodge in the guard break. Oh, huh. Okay, it does seem to catch. I want yeah, that'll catch. But then backwards to I don't think you can. Um, like, if if I did that, I don't think that's going to catch your guard break if you don't dodge cancel. Yeah. Yeah. There we go. So, I guess there's the that punish it, but in general, it gives her a lot more flexibility on her move. I think you used to be able to just dodge guard break it. Regardless. I mean, not so. really. Her recoveries and that stuff is though. This basically her all of the updates she got this patch pretty much useless. Like, <laughs> no, nothing she got was noticeable, like, not at all, other than maybe the crossbow change. Oh, there's one more change as well that she has, which is now forward dodge. Actually, there's, there's two more changes that she has, I'm going to talk about those. Um, the forward dodge heavy, the window to input it, has been changed. It can be input slightly earlier and maybe much later, so it should have more range now as well. If you delay it, you get a little bit more range on it. She's got a very long range forward dodge. So, I mean, that's nice, because that was, again, one of the things she uses in team fights. The issue is, of course, that if somebody blocks it, there's, like, nothing you're going to do. Um, that she can't do anything afterwards. And, of course, if they dodge it, I think then I get a free guard break as well, so... Oh, no. I mean, it's only the side ones that... If you, like, dodge really early... Yeah, I my guard, I mean, side, the side dodge heavies are still terrible. So if you if you like if I faint, uh, um, oh yeah, that's really really bad. Yep. So this they I mean I think they just need to be able to chain into heavies or dodge. Yeah, I mean they just they need to be chain openers and then that'll be much that'll be greatly improved and she'll be able to use them. She'll be able to she can soft paint heavies into dodges. So if she could chain off the dodged heavies into another heavy and then dodge cancel that, then that gives her a lot more mobility in team fights as well. Um, I don't think there needs to be... So these are like things that need to be listed in her moveset, so they're a little bit more complicated. I mean, look, that. she has so many tools, like so many soft phase, dodge cancels, stuff like that, utility, and she's still useless. Just because yeah. she doesn't have anything in external or tracking. Yeah. Um, so the last change that she has received is to do with her war, essentially to do with her war splat punish. Um, so you can now throw and dodge out of throws much sooner. So you should be able to get two stabs into the forward dodge heavy um, much more consistently, even at super close range. Previously, that would have been blockable, and it worked on all directions of her throw as well. I think. So it's it's a, a little change, but it means that it's in the past it used to be almost better going for the three stabs every time, and now you can actually get more damage using that. Um, the f the, the follow-up bleed stab is always damage reduced still. So as you can see, my bleed is coming out. There's some ticks of bleed that only do one damage, and that's because the follow-up bleed stab, the deep gouge, gets damage reduced by third hit stun from the wall splat. But it's still better than using her triple stab and her previous punches, so that's that's good. Um, now I guess we can cover Centurion's changes, because we've got Centurion. The first thing you'll notice, which we were talking about earlier, is the dodge side dodge attack the dodge light is only 600 milliseconds but it is enhanced so i can chain into it into the punch or into my three light chain you know um, i'm trying to dodge punch 
Um, these changes are very much welcome. So the characters that didn't have dodge attacks now have dodge attacks. Um, that is Centurion, Black Prior, Warlord, um, Yormungunda, and know. Highlander. So these are good changes. And yes, <laughs> the other changes, Centurion... Centurion's had a few other changes as well. His full, his regular charged heavies now have a lot more range. Well, know. a this bit is, more range. This, this is just TLDR. For everything everything that got changed this patch that says uh, forward movement or forward tracking improved is so abysmal that it's not even noticeable. And I will cry about oh. it in hopes that they actually do a proper update on that because... <laughs> I mean, I think it's not... Yeah, I mean they are they aren't they aren't like, massive. I mean, like, the patch notes gave us some numbers which are like often like seven, 75 centimeters or or like one. There is one that has got a lot of forward change forward tracking that has been improved by a, a whole meter and that's a lot better. But to be honest, even like thinking about your regular heavies, this is quite a long way for a regular heavy to go. It's not the same as like a dodge heavy or anything, but you know it's not inconsiderable. That does 27 damage and you can faint it, of course. So chains into pressure. Meh, it's you know. It's better than not having it. Um, other change, Centurion, his zone attack now only costs 12 stamina per hit, which is, considering he's got 160 stamina to start off with, really nice. Um, and his actually zone is, it's, it's a decent, it's got a decent hitbox. It has, it does okay damage, I guess. Yeah, his um, zone is actually usable. But, uh, back in the yeah. day, uh, before CCU, his zone used to be used on... Um, on knockdown, revenge knockdown punishes because each hit was twenty five damage. Yeah, yeah, it was it was bonkers, but it wasn't faintable, so it was like only for knockdown punishes. And uh, sometimes you got it off. Oh, no, the real the real nutty one was that it used to be an unlock punish. So if you're out of lock, you couldn't lock. You go out of lock now. I think they've changed it. So no. Oh no. Okay, still. All yeah, right, there mean, we go. it's not really any damage, but. <laughs> No, it was bloody fixed damage, so I think he can actually get he gets a heavy into heavy on unlock punishes anyway, so Yeah, back in the um, day that was seventy five damage. Seventy five damage and now he can just heavy heavy you if you're unlocked and, and you know, yeah, that's, that's still a lot of damage too. Twenty five. Uh and I mean it used to be another thing you could do for because it, it's guaranteed after a kick. So you could do that and then get ready, but I don't think that works quite as much yeah, anymore. Because so. that's second stagger, but Yeah. Um Anyway, he's uh, as well as the zone being buffed, the forward range on his heavies being buffed, he has now got some changes to his charged punch. So after a... Um, so if you're going to just dodge attack my charged punch, as you can see, it tracked that dodge attack, and a lot of dodge attacks beforehand would just be... Uh, it would just They would avoid all the timings of his punch. Uh, it's... I think it got it got a slight range increase. It's now 100 milliseconds faster, and the hyper armor hits in. Um, that's the wrong button. The hyper armor hits it, tracks in like 33 milliseconds sooner. Um, so it's now more reliable as a charge bash tool, essentially. I think you know, it's still not like you know, charge bashes aren't great for team fighting. Um, it probably changes his ganks actually now a bit because it's 100 milliseconds faster. You'll have to re people have to relab out his ganks to make sure they get the timings right. Um, but it's a nice change with 1v1s, which we're lacking. Like, and not having a tool to his as a 1v1 character now, I think he's significantly better. Um, he doesn't get absolutely completely ruined by bash characters. His charge bash mix up works um, a lot more reliably. You know, nice change for Centurion. Not going to push push him back into the me into the 4v4 meta at all uh, because this dodge attack isn't isn't you know. It's not these dot attacks, by the way, they're all the same. They're all light parries. They're all 600 milliseconds enhanced lights, Highlanders, and they are not delayable. They are on a fixed timing. As you can see, I tried to delay it there and just messed up. The messed up. It's gonna. They're all 300 milliseconds, which is itself a bit of a problem because against fast recovery bashes like Black Priors and uh, Warlords, you can't use them to punish them very reliably. Um, but we will talk about that when we go to those characters. Let's go to those ones. Um, do you want to go Black Prior, Normie? Because there's um, well, you can talk about Centurion whilst you whilst you whilst we're loading up. What are your what are your opinions on these cent changes? What do you think they're gonna change for the character in the meta? Uh, well, in the meta, nothing percent. However, uh, the dodge attacks in general for people who are like, oh, these 
Dodge attacks are shit. They're not good for anything. Fixed timing. We don't like fixed timing dodge attacks. I agree. I think fixed timing dodge attacks are BS. But um, you need to use these sort of as an option select in 1v1s. But mostly in team fights um, because of the iframes. Sometimes you need to avoid a lot of things at the same time or have to take some risks by dodging or trying to parry something and you can sort of negate that by using the iframes on the dodge attacks which all of the dodge attacks that were added with the latest patch have decent or good iframes yeah oh. yeah i mean it's definitely improvement for him in team fights he lacks hitboxes and lacks and used to lack mobility a lot and now his mobility is improved and well, his hitbox is still bad but he's at least there's the one attack he's got, which has got good hitbox, has is cheaper and he's got better range on his forward attacks. I mean, he still needs changes to be an effective character. Um, I think it's very, it's always going to be very hard for Centurion, given his move set, his animations, to be an effective team fighter. But things like his Legion kick being pretty ineffective opener, um, the forward dodge heavy is unfeintable and very. You know, very very risky to use yeah, there are things we, we could see to improve him as a character um but i mean charge bash is always going to be, be be tricky and he's still a good and he's still a good strong ganker um i don't think it's going to push him back into the meta again of course now we have we now have so many characters in the game that you have to be a really kind of even with the conquest format it's hard sometimes hard for characters to push into that top top tier of, of characters but he's not would you say he's moved up a tier from like C tier to B tier with these changes? If the uh, I mean, I haven't seen him in action as much to figure out if how much uh, difference the punch changes do. Um, but <laughs> shit, hardly. <laughs> Fair enough. I mean, it's still there. These are these changes are small, but they are quality of life changes. So they're good changes anyway, and certainly things that needed the character needed. If he gets other things in the future, that'd be great. But next, we're going to talk about is Lawbringer, who hasn't his changes are fairly minimal, but again, somewhat impactful. Um, first off, he's got increased range and on his light openers. I mean, previously that would have whiffed. Now at least it doesn't whiff. Um, he does still have a weird thing where if you hold the, the bug where you go so sidewalk and light attack has like zero range so that's not changed and people will still notice that the range on his light openers and i think his heavy openers as well have both increased yes so that's nice i mean on his heavies it is it's it is. noticeable on lights uh it's like on heavies it's gone from normal to slightly above normal and on lights it went from literally nothing to almost normal <laughs> fair enough i mean it, his heavies are certainly better for him as openers than his lights because he has his bash mix up afterwards so um something that also has changed him again it's difficult to just demonstrate him we should do some dominion but whatever is his, the hitboxes on his side heavies hit, the hitboxes should now match the, the character's moves it used to be that he swing around with these huge things and would just phase through people um that has changed now these now at least as far as i'm aware i have I, he's only come out the patch obviously only came out earlier this week <laughs> And I haven't had a chance to play every single character that got changed because there were lots of them. Testing rounds as well. So we'll see how Lawbringer players feel their oh, I have, heavies. And got. you no longer feel bad. It feels normal. That's all you <laughs> really hear. It doesn't need a showcase. If you feel like you're going to hit them, then you will hit them. That's all there is. There is still some problems yeah. with uh, forward movement because, for example, his finisher UB has a lot of forward movement, which sometimes makes him go forward so much that it doesn't hit to his side anymore. But um, I see, yeah. I, I mean, that's in itself can be a good thing. Yeah, like uh, it's 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 better now. Like it's not stupid anymore. Yeah, I think this is is his. I mean, it's he's always been he's been suffered very much as a team fighter ever since the removal of the hyper armored um sh on chain shove because he now his recoveries i mean you can you still can't really punish him with a gb because he can just shove you but you can peel him with anything else um speaking of so uh, chain bash and bash in general would you neutral bash for me 
the recovery of that has gone up like it was in the Garbic TG. Are you sure? I am sure that it's gone up a little bit. I'm not oh, sure try if it's gone up off a, as much. Try off a chain heavy. I'm gonna, I'm gonna heavy and. Yeah. Oh, that seems about the same to me. Wait, maybe it's in TG only. Hold on a minute. Oh. Well. Because uh, there's been funny clips of it. Off. Because there was this one clip back when uh, the GB changes came, which just had a big caption, get real. And it was, I can't say, <laughs> yeah. uh, the uh, Lobbinger shove. But uh, those surfaced again, re-recorded, which I think means that it might still be in, uh, in TG. I'm not sure. We might be able hmm. to test later. But... Yeah, I think that's a good, give, it, give it a look later. Um, the other change that Lobbinger hasn't got is his zone still costs an enormous amount of stamina. Um, it still costs 60 stamina. It's a bit weird that that hasn't been improved because whilst it has very, it's a very strong tool in itself because it's got very low recoveries. I mean, you cannot dodge punt if you do try and dodge attack this zone. Um, oh, ha! Ah, that's about to sound like great. Um, try and dodge attack the zone. I just want to demonstrate how how nothing these recoveries are. Yeah, again, it's got 400 mess recoveries. It's this is a super safe tool for well for team fighting and also clearing minions. Um, the other change Lobring has now is that his parry punishes are a little bit easier to input, and especially the impale. Wow, I'm really good now. You're basically you shouldn't get that if you if the if the impale comes out when you when you you don't delay it too much. It should always be it should always land. So this is a weird one, um, a weird change. I mean, I like the input rec input changes being more comfortable. That's normally good. <laughs> Um, it's weird they've buffed his strongest tool, but it's kind of I can understand that they that needed to be improved, and then if they rework the character later down the road and give him changes that improve his viability, they can also then do something about the impale punish being being insane. Um, but yeah, he's his. Uh, I think now I think you still can. Do a regular top heavy off a light parry and it'll land. Yes. Um, yeah. Give me a do give me give me a dodge light and I'll, I'll demonstrate that. There we go. So, he, I mean, if anything, that kind of gives him a bit more flexibility in his punishes. Sometimes you don't want to do blind justice because you want to chain afterwards. Um, well, I guess you could always bash afterwards. Anyway, but there's a lot bringing changes. But we'll move on to Black Prior's changes, which are a little bit more considerable as well. As you've noticed, he's one of these characters with a dodge stack now. He's got enhanced dodge light. It's enhanced, he means he can change his bash from it. Um, and he can also recovery cancel it into full block. For that. Uh, and, and, you know, so it's, it is, I mean, it's a strong tool. Like, if I dodge bash it, I can flip my dodge bash. So, you know, it's, it's got all the things that all of the, and it, it goes straight into his offense, which is obviously great for him as well. Um, you know, it's a, it's a, of all the dodge attacks that are in, that were added, this one is one of the stronger ones on account of how strong the rest of BP's moveset is after his basic attacks. So this is a really nice thing for BP, um, certainly good in team fights. Another thing which has been changed is on, on the topic of dodges of Black Black Pry, is his four dodge heavy has had its range improved. And this one, this time it actually really has had its range improved. <laughs> We've seen changes to BP Chase a few times, and this thing schmooves now. It is it it will, it goes a long, long way. Um, and like, yeah, how 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 far can you be to even miss? Well, I'll get that far. Okay. By the way, if you don't max delay this thing, it doesn't go anywhere still. Yeah, I mean, I guess if you, that's a bit of a lot of things, but you know, it's got. Oh, that was weird. <laughs> it's got a lot of range. It still doesn't recovery cancel into his. Bulwark stance, which is is the only move in his kit that doesn't, that's not a bash, and it's really odd, um, and, or a bulwark move to start off with. So I don't know why that's the case, but you know, to... now if you roll away from BP's mix-up, uh, if you do your like, you can light into your unblockable. Um, yeah, you know, that's gonna catch it every time. Um, he also has his running attack improved now. It is now not. 1000 milliseconds it's now 700 milliseconds it's got good reach to it it's lower damage it has a crazy hitbox still so this is actually a pretty good running attack now um can you recovery cancel it into the full block 
Um, no, you can't do anything after it. No, I can't. Okay. Well, fair enough. But I mean, it's 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 not terrible, and it used to be a hilarious joke that would hit people because they try and parry it <laughs> too early. <laughs> but um, yeah, it hits all the random as well, so it's got a, it's a, a really good attack. Um, now, as running attacks go, it's pretty good. And the big change for Bull, for Black Prior is now Bulwark Slash has 100 milliseconds of guard break vulnerability. So if you go into Bulwark stance now, and then I will walk towards you in GB. You can also just dodge forward and grab break, I think. Pardon? You can also just or... dodge forward and grab break. Or, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, it's a, it is, a, you know, it's a big improvement to him, especially, I mean, his new, if, again, if you're at a level where you can't react to his uh, unblockable feint, which I certainly can't and most players can't, um, this is a big improvement to his neutral offense as well, because you, you're not going to get guard broken out of his neutral offense nearly as much, it, because from neutral, it's 100 ms on its own, but... When you have when you enter bulwark, there's an extra 100 ms, so it's 200 ms. But it's still, if I'm spamming guard break at you, um, well, let's, let's spam guard break at each other. Um, it's just gonna bounce off. So, yeah, I mean, you can, you can, isn't it yeah. 200 for bulwark? By the way, it's normally 200, but you can cancel the first 100 ms into an attack, so it's actually only 100. Mm. Um, either way, it's really good for him. Um, has changed there. I mean, the best way well, to show it is about... uh, top heavy into Bulwark and you can dodge guard break. Uh, what's up? So dodging guard break my top heavy. Okay. Oh. Yeah. I mean, previously that would have caught, and now it works essentially like a chain attack, which kind of makes sense given that the reason that heavies have guard break vulnerability to start off with is because they're parries and you can't parry with it anymore now. Options like that kind of thing. Oh yeah. Um, uh... For people wondering, um, why well, I have tried it, you, okay, for trying to bulwark slash on reaction to guard break, you need to have like a 133 MS reaction time consistently, and it's just not a thing you want to do, but yes, technically it is possible. Yeah, technically it's possible. I mean, it's, it's like um, any other full lock that has a 100, has 100 MS guard break vulnerability move from it, which I think is every full lock move, other than Conqueror's. Uh, yeah, um, but I think BP is the fastest one to attack. I have tried it, and I could do it, but I needed to be, like, in my monitor. Yeah, so, so I mean, like, I don't know if that is... It's not It's not going to make it yeah. super unsafe. For, it's not from, a move you want to you wanna use like that. Yeah. And if you do try and do that, like... Well, you can give, give an example of you trying to guard break. Of me you what? Try, you, you can try and try and guard break my uh, try and slash my, my guard break now. Just give it one, one second. Sit in your mind for, for a moment. There, that's gonna happen, right? So even if you're even if you're <laughs> you, you're not gonna be able to react. I probably can't anyways because I'm on ultra settings. But whatever. Yeah, well, fair enough. But regardless, it's you can't really use it for that. And if you are even using it on a read or based on movement, you're gonna get hit by like. Yeah, yeah. Like the only way to react to it is react to movement, uh, because the you you can't react the garbage symbol because it fades in, so it's only on movement. And yes, on movement you can do it, but it's like like you yeah. you will just get fucking top headed. Yeah. So, um, it's that it does make him it does on the it does make him safer though. And do you want to explain a little bit how how it's made him safer for me? Okay. Basically, um, the thing about BP before was that if you really wanted to play BP effectively uh, at the highest level is you needed really 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 good reaction so that you could flip bashes and fast attacks on reaction um, because that was the only way you could punish those things now obviously you have a dodge attack which is really helpful because it's enhanced and you can go into a bulwark slash etc etc but um, the biggest mix up I mean not mix up but like thing that has helped them is against characters with bashes that you would normally want to flip some people react to the forward dodge or uh, with trying to go into bulwark and if you panic but input bulwark slash and you're going to be safer it's just overall not as risky to use the move like you don't need to land something before to be able to go into the slash safely and it's also going to be much much uh, more useful in team fights because it's yeah. his best uh, hitbox move and before it's like you either try to guard break and catch him in the startup of the slash or he does a chain heavy that you bounce off of but he doesn't even hit you with it so mm. 
Do you think this is overall a healthy change? I do, yes. Or I do. I wanted to, I was a bit sketched about it because I thought it might have been too strong on like characters like Warlord or Kong or characters that have GB to something mixed up from neutral. But after playing with him and against him, no, it's, I think it's fine. And I can say that BP, like I said before, is in a very balanced state right now in all game modes. Yeah. Yeah, it's a really good change, I think. Um, and BP, like now, is. We we had a we did a big long podcast a long a uh, while ago on Barrack with Barrack Semix and Freeze talked about um, team fighters and what makes a good team fighter and BP one of the things we talked about BP was that that he that full walk flip is very risky and he's very static in team fights because he has no he has very low mobility well he's got a dodge attack now that's good um, and he has much better forward range on his forward dodge heavy which is good and his bulwark, bulwark stance is safer which is good I think he's a strong team fighter now and certainly in the contention for second compositions i mean he already was oh absolutely no not even not even a doubt about it uh, i still think you need yeah. to be like way really 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 good with him in order to make him work but still yeah we will see him in tournaments for certain i'd, I'd say yes um so, although you know now there's there's gonna be so many characters available to play in tournaments, like maybe maybe the we won't see him in tournaments. In chat, Devil. wondering about the outfit giveaways. Don't worry, we know it's taken a while, but the outfit is not in the game, and we'll get it all mid-season. Am I correct? Yes, yes, you are correct. The outfit is not in game yet, so we can't give it to you yet. It's coming in title update two, which is on the twentieth of October, and that is when you will have it. But before you get it, that we will be contacting you to do to the verification stuff, which is some emails coming out in a bit. Um, if you go Warmonger, you want to go Warmonger? Okay, I'll go. I'll go. Well, in this case, I'm going to go Peace. I'm going to go there's Griffin. Some, there's some things I want to show, but uh, Actually, no, I'll go, I'll go um, Gladiator because we do need to. For to all the people who you. have won the giveaway or played in 20, don't worry about it. You're all written down. All your names are there, and it's all going to come. Don't worry. Nobody's going to get forgotten. Yeah. No, and no one's no one's going to be forgotten. I like. I know this is the. Uh, yeah, it's a. Uh, it's always frustrating to wait and you want to have things now. <laughs> I get it completely. Um, there has been a lot of uh, a lot of things have to come together in in the uh, behind the scenes to make all this stuff happen. So it takes some time. But I am at least at least I, I can promise you personally, I am working very hard to make make sure that everything um, does happen. So I'm right currently right now I'm on my holiday. And I'm, I'm taking some time to do the to do a. I'm not. I'm, I'm working my whole thing. <laughs> so, yeah, humble. it's all gonna happen. It's all be good. Um, I mean, like, yeah, don't worry about it. Uh, yeah, just takes time. And of course, that we've been a little. We've been prioritizing the pr doing verification stuff for players who've received prizes, uh, cash and steel prizes because we can send those out before we can send the outfit codes out, which aren't just they aren't they aren't ready yet. Um, okay, so we'll talk Gladiator before we talk Warmonger. Before that we talk pretty anything, minimal. we have a fashion question. Uh, it's an elite outfit, and I'll show it to you when we back out, if I remember. Oh, which which is the question? What they got? The about my... pattern on my cape. Oh yeah, it's the. Um... Oh, I thought that one was the. Uh, oh, I know. I'll see that. See it later. <laughs> yeah, let's do. Let's do. Talk, we'll talk Griffin uh, Gladiator first. First thing, he's also been received a stamina improvement is it, it now only costs 50 stamina instead of 80 stamina but seeing as gladiator has 150 stamina and he also has the fastest stamina regen speed in the game this is actually not so bad uh you know it is it's it, it's there but you can use it a lot a little bit more now the other change gladiator has had is his side and four dodge bashes now cost 12 stamina instead of 24 which is which is what they used to do and also his parry input counters. You want to throw a top heavy? Like you can really, really delay this thing now. I mean, you still don't really want to use it <laughs> because it doesn't chain into anything. Uh, oh, okay, that's that's about it. You know, he only, he only goes into his heavies and doesn't guarantee any damage. Um, I guess that you can ledge people with it, but then you could ledge people with a zone if you wanted to. Um, it's a it's a weird move. Still, I I don't know thing about his high punish. Like I was thinking, if it wall splatted, then it'd be insane because then you'd be able to get a 
skewer off a wall off a parry punish and then wall splat with again with that so you can't let it wall splat if it confirmed a light i guess that would be fine but then you would never use anything other than his dodge bashes if you if you confirmed lights i don't know it's a bit of a weird one maybe if they chained into if he had 400s cha light chain lights and you could chain into the into the lights after the bashes then that would be that would be something worth worthwhile um so you know so like a but then you can do that after a light dodge light as well uh, i don't know that is a weird character um he's got a lot of things that are strange about him like you're difficult to think about how how to buff him but let's go into warmonger now so the first thing you saw is warmonger's bashes now do bleed damage so they do eight bleed damage each and the punishes that you land off them have changed um as uh, as you'd expect so they do the same amount of damage so that the, the bash light does seven damage and the bash heavy does 20 damage but overall so overall the damage hasn't changed um except it has changed if you get a wall splat yes, so yeah i'm gonna just generate so you always used to be able to do that it's just it wasn't worthwhile doing it because the bash afterwards was a heavy um and it was 28 damage on that but now you can get the, the bleed damage and you get um well, i think i could have bought that one if i tried but at the max range wall splat is actually you can actually get two bashes off it hmm, okay that, that wasn't quite max range. it's uh, it's it's very very tricky range you need to be like at the very max range of the thing but as you can see that is eight plus 27 so that's a lot of damage on a wall splat it's is nice. I it's, mean, it's gonna make. I, I, I've tested of... this today, earlier today. Uh, I still have the clip. I'm not gonna. I forgot to download it and uh, or not download it, but bring it up on stream. Maybe I can, but I'm not gonna do it. But we've tested this with uh, Warmonger's feeds, obviously, which up her uh, damage by 30%, and she heals 50% mm -hmm. of her thing. Uh, we I tested it, uh, and it is the actual attack itself just level three into wall splat top heavy with infection applied is like 54 hp i believe uh 54 yeah, hp right. and you heal about 13 14 hp so that is one mix up uh for half of the enemy self part which is absolutely broken you think this is broken yeah i mean it's i mean well you know has have three feats applied so meh i don't know it's i i really like the fact that it does bleed damage i i think the only thing they need to do is make the uh the animate the slash of it be red like the like the dodge like the power repost um this is a tiny tiny quibble but uh if you do the parry impale the claw marks are red um and if you do them the bashes they're yellow and i want them to be red as well because they because that'd look cooler but it's I think this is a major improvement for her team fight. So he's, she's got one other change, which the zone is now only 20 stamina as well. Um, so, you know, that's nice uh, to have. But it, her zone is a good good move, and 20 stamina makes sense. Um, I can it's, go you know, Yeah. And I can't parry it because I'm on the laptop for 30 frames a second, and I'm slow and stupid. Uh, but, yeah, I think that... Did she get any other changes other than those, those ones? Uh... Um... Uh, yes, it, yes, 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 yes. Oh. Armor. oh, yes, of course. Right, I'll dodge. I'll do it. Uh, you just throw me a heavy and then to heavy into heavy. Basically, what this means for her is, so she already always had hyper armor on her finishers, but it was very late hyper armor. Um, what, now it's 100 ms, so basically instant like Raider, like uh, Gri uh, not Griffin. Well, Griffin as well now, but. Yeah, uh, Griffin as well now, yeah. But uh, what's the name? Magi. What this means yeah. is that you can see people dodge attacking or trying to attack into your recovery and like on reaction uh heavy into it it just helps her a lot in team fights and stuff like that yeah. so uh, very useful uh, it's yeah and uh the bash doing direct damage in team fights is also really big as well i think because it means that you you can hit somebody and then you don't have to do a follow-up or you can target switch your follow-up and you're still gonna have done damage so uh, she's, she's always been able to target switch her follow ups, but then, you know, if you target switch your follow up into somebody who blocks it, then you've done only chip damage on that person. But now you get bleed damage on them, and it and it allows her to kill with chip damage on low health opponents, which is pretty good. She has she has enhanced lights, which are frame advantaged, so that's nice, and it gives really good synergy with the bleed characters, Nabushi. Yeah, so Nabushi, we've run uh, uh, Warmonger Nabushi in scrims today, and just the bleed 
procs uh, Way of the Shark for Nabushi and makes the gank deal like 90% of anybody's HP. <laughs> so I say really it's busted, isn't it? And, um, yeah, I mean... Yeah, I mean, just really nice. The only thing I want for this character is that now that this does damage, make it a proc, uh, make it land the infection as well. Because that, oh, would, make, oh, that, would, that be... would make a landing infection so much oh, easier. And that is a really good. You could do this, and it would do a lot more damage. <laughs> that is an, that's a really interesting point, and you know, that's actually interesting. should it should it do that? Yeah, I mean, I hadn't thought about that, but it kind of makes sense now. That it does direct damage. Maybe that's why they didn't give it like one direct damage plus bleed damage. They didn't want that to be the case. Uh, well, yeah, it's a, it's though. a bleed if hit, not a bleed on hit. So it's a bit stupid. But uh, currently, her main problem is they nerfed uh, her tier one super heavily. Which used to have like what, like ten seconds to to it's land, fourteen seconds ridiculous. to land, and now it's like eight seconds. Eight which, seconds, yeah. With the animation and dodging into an enemy, you really need a teammate to garbage for you in order to land it, or you have to pray that your team, your enemy is like asleep or something. So, yeah, being able to do this to land it and then land the confirm damage on top is really nice. But we hope yeah. maybe one day. Yeah, that's a good change. I mean, it's one of these again. These are like these little tweaks and. Warmonger is one of these characters that is not a meta character anymore. But, like, again, this is, you said that she's with Nabuchi, like, wrecking face. It really brings up Shaman as well. Um, yeah, we ran, uh, like we ran Nabuchi, Warmonger, Shaman. Warmonger goes really well with Nabuchi now because of the bleed thing and the gank. Warmonger goes really well with Shaman because of the uh, enhanced light that can uh, confirm the, the bite. Uh, characters just synergize better. And yeah, for a question which, in chat, which is really cool. Uh, if backlight into bash slash heavy is a viable opener for Warmonger, it depends on the situation. But I would highly recommend trying to condition your enemy uh, without having to be away because me doing this into this or me into this is a lot riskier, uh, and I'm taking a lot more chances than if I were to condition my enemy into not knowing if I'm gonna light or heavy. And then, you know, just work from there. Yeah. And you can still you know, do the regular bash, yeah. Um, very nice change for Warmonger. I am really pleased with the change. It looks... I always always was surprised that her claw didn't do direct damage, because it looks like it should do. And now it does. So, yeah. It's cool. I like it. It makes it the character different to... More different to, to Warden, so that's nice as well. Um, gets more of her own identity. Yeah, a really good change for, for Warmonger. Um, she can now her bash her gank with shaman is now kind of nuts. She bashes into light and the shaman bites off that, and then goes into finisher heavy. So that's kind of amazing. Um, yeah, a really interesting change. So I think that's oh no, there's there's one more knight which is the griffin. So you're gonna go warlord, I will go griffin. Um, um, we should jump over zerk, and yeah, we'll we'll, we'll skip the other just character. like whatever. So. Yeah, so there's a, uh, I guess, whilst we're looking at the character select screen, I don't know if you are showing the character select screen on screen. I am. Are you on screen? Okay, yes. perfect. So, Zerka now has stamina, uh, low cost, 30 stamina for his zones, and has 130 health, which is really nice for his trading play style. So, hey, 10 extra again, from before. 10 extra health fee, which is the same as Raider. Um, no, I mean, it's good. I mean, if, if Raider's has enough health to trade, then Berserker now has enough health to trade, basically. And, well, yeah, uh, it's honestly, good. it doesn't make that big a difference because you get out-traded nowadays by every mutual heavy that does 27 damage, but it's all right. Yeah, yeah, it's fair. It's, uh, I mean, it's only an improvement. Guess. It's a good change, so nobody's going to say not to it. Yeah, all right, I'll get my... I don't know. Um, other characters that have had, like, very minor changes we will cover. Um, Shigoki's zone is 30 stamina. Um, Kyoshin's zone is 20 stamina. Aramusha's zone, which wasn't in the patch in the stream reveal, but it was in the patch notes and is accurate, is 40 stamina, so 20 on the first hit, 20 on the second hit. Um, other characters have only had stamina buffs on their zone. Um, Zhan Hu has only, has, is the only one he got was, set, was a 30 stamina zone, but that's really big for Zhan Hu because Zhan Hu's zone is really, really good. So having 20 stamina, having to be able to use your zone more frequently is kind of massive. Um, for Gen Hu. Any other characters that only got stamina buffs in their zones? Uh, nothing else? Not really. I mean, there's only like a handful of characters that still have high cost on their uh, zones, and yeah. most of them make a little bit of sense. 
like for example pk's utility off of her zone is like really like you have a lot of options out of her zone so i guess it's all right if it costs a lot of stamina that was a buzzing sound and it was, i thought what's that buzzing sound it's my effect <laughs> all right so griffin's changes are somewhat small um griffin's zone is also now only 20 stamina um I mean, this is a this is a good zone still. It's it's Jan, it's JJ zone. Um, so good hitbox. Doesn't really change anything interesting though, because it just changes into his regular heavies and then into its finishes. Uh, he has also had hyper armor buffs. So if you dodge attack my wait well, now wall can dodge attack, but if you dodge attack my forward dodge light. Yeah, thirty two damage hyper armor heavy with one hundred hyper armor. The sides are thirty damage. So that. A really good change for him in team fights. Um, the other big change that Griffin has is the recoveries on his. It, it, they call they said mind cleaver, which is the forward dodge heavy, but actually it's in his side dodge heavy. So the forward dodge heavy is not very really good on Griffin, and buffing it wouldn't really do anything. But the side dodge heavy is one of his biggest team fight tools. Oh, I just didn't count guard break then. Yeah, so the recovery on this thing used to be enormous. I think it used to be 1,100 or something insane. Now it's 800 meters per guard break, but more importantly, it's um, only 500 meters to block, 600 meters to block. So you cannot dodge attack his dodge attack, um, it, regardless of which side it's on. So if you dodge attack the other direction, my, so I can guard switch towards your other direction. Oh, okay, there you go. You can, I mean, if you, earlier, but, if you do it really early, yeah. yeah but, uh... I like that then. Yeah. So this is a really good change for, for Griffin because his the way he works in team fights is essentially target switch, dodge attacks, and then do something else. Because his four dodge head four dodge bash isn't exactly excite isn't exactly gonna rock in all his world. Um he needs other changes obviously still. I think like a feintable four dodge heavy would be something he needs. An enhanced four dodge light would be nice as well. And his bash should you have to chain off with. Because he doesn't anymore, and that's weird. Um, and you know, this is an overall nice quality of life change for Griffin. He's still a like a very basic character, which makes his his overall playstyle very weird. Um, but you know, he's not. This is a buff. It's a buff for Griffin, um, especially in team fights, which is the main the main thing, um, which is where he was best at, and now he's better at. What would you say Griffin falls on the tier on like you know on the meta now? Any, any, is he worth picking in any compositions, or just still out overshadowed by uh, every other character that does well, the same thing? If you have a hero that, um, if you, I'm not a hero, but if you have a, a teammate that is good on the character and is like one of their mains, then you should absolutely go for it if uh, they're comfortable on it because it's not a bad pick anymore. Yeah, it's not like obviously it's not first common material. It it could debate it if it's second common, maybe if the player is absolutely cracked out of their mind, but it's not like he's not a shit hero anymore i guess yeah yeah which is very really nice um i mean i think that's what's nice about these changes is they've 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 clearly focused on well every character but they haven't buffed you know you know there's none of the very top tier characters have had received any quality of life buffs so uh they've decided that jan that jj didn't need to get a stamina buff on his zone <laughs> or um raider didn't need to have a running his running attack get better tracking or anything like that they've just it's only been like the 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 characters which aren't considered the top tiers that have gotten any any buffs, which is obviously, um, yeah, I guess it's a good approach as well. Warlord is the next one, and so I've seen lots of people saying that Warlord, oh, that's nothing. Warlord's still rubbish. Well, these Warlord changes are fucking incredible. So for a start, he gets a dodge attack, which covered his biggest weakness. It's still only a six on less light, like fixed input light attack, but he can chain to hyper armor of it. This is a chain opener, so it's safe still. It's not early hyper armor. But it's still, it's still, you know, that, maybe that's something else they should add to him. But you can still trade with it, so it's still comparatively safe. Um, anyway, he trades it to his heart's lance. The other changes he's got, his zone is now 30 stamina as well. And his zone has always been one of the strongest tools in the game, teamfight peel tools. That is, it's, the fact that he can use it now pretty much whenever he wants is massive. The other change which he's got is to his Full block heavy, which you don't see, you never used to see be used because it used to have abysmal range and abysmal tracking. Now this thing has got about the same range and tracking as his zone does. It is nuts, and it's a 24 damage unblockable, a dodgeable rather. In this age of dodge dodge heavies, 
and like dodge cancelling heroes, this is a massive buff to its team fights. Like, and they were already strong. So Ward has gone from being, I mean, people were picking him in like second comp as a comfort pick, but I think he's genuinely second comp material now. You, would you agree, Normie? Yeah, I mean, uh, it's it's gonna be a, get a bit weird to uh, get used to using this because it's still like very unsafe to use technically but uh the hitbox is absolutely nuts and it's definitely something nobody will expect yeah it's because people it's been it's been rubbish for so long nobody's used it nobody's used to having it around <laughs> uh yeah i mean i think warlord needs like now two changes which is the recovery cancel his openers into the full block and be able to currently if you stick it in the full block now um pop it to full block for me and then you can guard break out. Uh, if you guard break off bash, you'll do, you'll do the headbutt. So if he could do that without blocking attack before, then he's got a bash and dodge all mix up from neutral and in chain. That is literally all the thing the character needs to be like complete. Uh, he I'd needs say. quite a bit more for his auger. Like for example, look at my stamina when you hit me. Oh well, yeah, no, that's the thing that all, all full block characters need to have adjusted because he drains his stamina on full block, which I think is fine, but. I don't like it when you eat like all your stamina bar for blocking an attack in full block, which is ridiculous. Uh, yeah, that's fun, isn't it? Um, but yeah, it's it's okay. That's another that's another like quality of life change which they could and should add to other full block heroes. Um, not to BP because I use that to measure hit stun values in <laughs> in training mode. Um, but <laughs> it's also he doesn't actually block attacks with his full block very much. Um, anyway, okay, next one. So Ward. Whilst he's still a very basic character, he's a basic character who's got way better. And you know, just having dodge a dodge attack with iframes in a team fight is such a big deal. For you, you now have a tool you can punish external unblockables with, which is super useful. Like it's is really big. And Ward's always been so for a long time has been a meta hero. Um, he's only recently fallen off the meta since the well, I guess within the last year, thanks to the option select changes. But, um, Not really. It was just a crushing charge nerf. Yeah. Okay. Well, yeah. Um, that that helps as well. All right. Um, you want to go shaman? I'll go highlander. Yes. All right. So we should also speed up. Um, because... Yes. All right. What's time now? How long have we go how long have we been going? One hour. Oh yeah. Twelve minutes. Yeah, I do like to talk, don't I? Um. So we'll cover some changes to a few other characters. Like we'll go a bit faster. Highlanders are fairly minimal. Um, so they don't need much explaining. Um, he's just got his zone costing less stamina, and he has a dodge heavy now, which is the Celtic Curse dodge heavy. There is one thing I want to mention about that, which is that we did see this dodge attack that Highlander had in the first in the last Scar Break vulnerability testing ground. And at the time, it was bad. It was 200 ms into the, into the dodge. It had no iframes. It was fixed input. And it sucked. Um, now it's the same as all the other ones. It's 600 ms. It's 300 ms input the, the, into the window. Oh, in the in the previous version, it was just a straight the same thing as his side Celtic Curse cancels, and they it nerfed the damage on those. But now the damage on them is the same. So whilst his side dodge heavy is 14 damage. Uh, his Celtic Curse cancels are still 24 damage with Hyper Armor, so these haven't been changed, which is nice. Um, the last thing is that now his Garbrick Banish, which is a zone, it only costs 12 for each one. So it's still rubbish, 18 damage on a Garbrick Punish is crap, but you know, it's it's 12 on each hit. Shaman's changes. So the big one is her. Um, my my um, big one is if you light into unblockable. Um, we now will trade, but it's a trade in Shaman's favor because it's 30 damage. Uh, Shaman's used to be 1,100 MS, and now it's 1,000. Um, this it's just 900 MS, so it's it's the same speed as JJ's. I don't think they've adjusted the hitbox for it, but they have adjusted the forward range of all of her heavy finishes. They aren't crazy, but they are much better than they used to be. Yeah, um, it was they like used to be PK before, rubbish. So now they're actually yeah. pretty good. Yeah. Yeah, nothing nothing crazy, but like, you know, they they're good now. Um her zone has got the stamina reduced to I think it's twelve first. Twelve. Twelve first and then six for all the other ones. 
So, you know, that's nice. Um, it's the punish she gets off her bash, which has also been summoned reduced to 12. So, you know, that's nice. Um, well, also this is... And now... Yes, and she used to have a summoner penalty, but when she changed between her... She grabbed her swords out, oh, it's her weapons, because um, she can soft paint those into, into one another by pressing guard break or heavy. Um, it's a kind of a weird move I don't see people use very often, um, but it used to cost a lot of stamina and do a stamina penalty, and now it doesn't. Um, yeah, it's just a nice change for stamina. Quality of life stuff, nothing nothing crazy. I don't think it's going to make her suddenly better again, because her gank is still very slow to pull off. Um, but, you know, and her team fights are, are, are still bad. They're still not good team fights. Um, but it's certainly an improvement to her. I feel like a few extra bits and bobs here and there could make her quite good as a team fighter. Um, like, you know, equivalent at least. But if she could, I don't know, use a dagger cancel on her finisher heavies and, or just heavy once into dagger cancel and then dodge cancel, the dagger cancel, the dagger attacks have very low recovery. So, you know, you can, you can, uh, uh <laughs> sorry, um, you can just dodge immediately after them. So, that used to be a hundred of miss recovery, which is the funniest part. 100 ms. Well, it's 400 ms now, but it's yeah, but no, it's, it used to be it's not like a dodge cancel. Oh wow. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Because it used to be you'd be like frame advantage into a light, and now or you frame advantage into another heavy, which is insane. Um, now it's yeah, kind of you get frame advantage into a light, but but you're not into a heavy, which is it's very weird for it to be a light that was frame advantage into a light. I mean, she still needs things. Um, I would like it if that that you know when she does her soft faint into the bash. Like, it'd be kind of cool if they didn't have that and soft faint from the, the bash stance into the heavy attack stance. Kind of cool if that attack, that little... She could just do it without having to have, like, that weird changing weapons animation. Then she'd be able to mix up, and then maybe her, like, her top heavy make it undodgeable or something, and then as a bash undodgeable mix up. It's already fantastic chase, so, you know, why not improve it? Um, and the things they could do, speed up the bite animation. Oh, nice for Shaman to have. Um, would you say she's... You know, approaching meta viability, especially with with um, Warmonger and and Nabushi game buffs. Yes, I do want to say that uh, we should take into obviously into the fray uh, for people that didn't watch or watch or don't remember. It was all best of three, which means every team had to use two comps, which was eight characters per team. But we have a tournament coming up and more in the future, run by community uh, TOs that have best of five or grand finals, which means that mm. we will be a third comp, and for third comp. Wormonger, Nobu, Nobu's actually probably second comp material for sure, but uh, these characters, including Shaman, are third comp material 100%. Yeah, that's pretty exciting, and and like hopefully we'll see some of the, we'll see what, um, yeah, it's still being decided and stuff, but I'd like to see, I'd like to see best of fives in the, in the official um, commute, in the official tournaments as well, so yeah, which is, it's much more exciting to see, and Anyway, let's switch up to the next ones, because you're right, we are taking a bit of time. Um, let's go back to the character select menu. We can talk quickly about some of the changes for characters which are less... Um, that's, it. that's all the... Well, we've got Yomongun who's got dodge light now, um, but that's it. The dodge light is an enhanced light, It's as you'd expect, um, but it's nothing special. It's nice for Yomongun to have, of course, but Yom is still bad. There's there's no no denying that. Stamina, his stamina, his zone still costs... 60 stamina, which is kind of hilarious, to be honest. But they have said they are reworking Yongenda, and he will be uh, getting a change, not a testing ground, not in this season, but in the next season, or I think they said. So that's good for him. You should, uh, you um, should pick Kensei, I think. Yeah, I'm going to go Kensei. So. You're going to go to Bushi? Yes. Mm -hmm. So, um, change for Kensei. Zone is cheaper. It's now 30 stamina. Again, zone for Kensei's zone has for a long time been one of his strongest tools in team fights, um, and having it be 30 stamina is very good. It's a very strong peel tool, it's got great hitbox, got very good range. You know, it's just very, very good. So 30 stamina is really good for it. Um, the next change that Kensei has had, which we will talk about as soon as we load in, is some tweaks to how the top heavy finisher is accessed and how it works. See, the top heavy finisher is Kensei's main mix-up, and what has happened is the links... Oh, this is going to get cold. I'll put it in my glasses. Um, my apple crumble has been sat there, sadly, inside of my my, my, my bedside table. <laughs> um, 
So the link from it's been first thing it's been sped up by one thousand well, what has it, by one hundred milliseconds to one thousand one hundred milliseconds. It has also now got the soft paint to the special faster guard break. So um I go light light that's a faster guard break. It's the same one you get after hard fainting. It's three hundred MS. Um it's this in in co the consequence of this is that well there's two consequences uh well, consequence of this is that now you can't really roll away from this mix up. So before you feel the roll away and now if I light like who is that? Well if I did that maybe. Oh. That was weird. Uh do um, no no, it's because it's light. Do the short light okay. into yeah. yeah, that's gonna catch. And same with the dodge heavies. Um Yeah, so basically you're gonna catch his gonna catch roll you can't really roll away from Kense anymore. Which is I mean it's a good change. Um and also I think now you because of the, the last thing they've changed is the link from the, the forward from the chain light into the sorry, into the unblockable finisher is one hundred milliseconds faster. So I think you still can interrupt it with a light attack. I mean, I would, but you can now, if you, if you try to interrupt with the top light attack, um, after I do the chain lights into into you, just the top light attack. Well, oh, I'm too slow to. <laughs> like before, you actually couldn't parry that. Can you still not parry it? Well, uh, well, it's again like on heavy stagger you can't. Well, yeah, on heavy stagger you can, but. That's not whether the the chain link has been improved. No, eh, I mean, whatever. I think the chain link was improved just because it felt like shit before. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I had to guess. It's still it's still a slow move. Um, I thought you. Oh, you know what it is. So before you couldn't actually trade with it anymore. So now if I go if I go like light light and then that's yeah. gonna hit and I even the. Ooh. Oh, you can still block that. Okay. I thanked the um, but we're good. Yeah. Oh, fair enough. Uh, I think like it would sometimes even hit before the high parama could come in, and you couldn't parry it as well. It was also unsafe against um, chain like fast bashes from from neutral, uh, like BP and so on. Yeah, but I think now it's they, just it's just safer and better yeah, to use. That's safer. all. But anyway, let's go talk about Nabushi now. So, what Nabushi's change is her dodge attacks now have proper iframes. Only so her it, lights. Uh, her light, yeah, the dodge lights have proper iframes. So, if I were to go, um, that's why I did that. I was going to do heavy soft paint to light. You should be able to dodge attack there. There we go. You see, it goes through. It's now faster as well. It's 533 MS. And the forward one is 500 milliseconds. Um, a change that has been made to Nabushi is now the f input window on the forward life. Technically, it's a nerf. Um, it's now 200 ms into, into the in run, so it used to be 0 ms, so you used to be able to get it off a heavy parry, and now you can't. Oh, yeah. I mean, I don't know why you would go for that anyways, when you can just do this. But... I mean, the only reason the reason you do that is because it has slightly better chaining options. You can go from that into the kit, can't you? Um, I mean, okay, yeah, great. So that was people, why people use it. It's, it's a minor nerf, but you know, whatever. Yeah, we'll talk about um, that as well. uh, current bug, technically bug. Is, uh, yes, so dodge attack my kick. Oh, oh. oh, yeah, yeah, sorry. You're gonna have to kick me with one. I can't react to your kick on this. Yeah, so the side dodge lights have iframes even when used from. Really? Okay, I'm just. Really? You're too much yes, because I can't. It's because... Just do light kick in line to kick so I can't react to the kick coming out at 30 frames per second with a. Yeah, so you can't. Now safely dodge attack the kick, which is interesting. Genuinely, it's, like I don't. I mean, it's not supposed to be like this, and it might I don't think it's supposed to be like this. No, it's not supposed to. It's just because it's a dodge attack that's chained. Uh, so yeah. it's like a good dodge attack, but it might get fixed. It might not. Honestly, I it don't might. really mind it that much. It's kind of a cool yeah. I don't, I don't. I think it's cool as well. Like because it now, you know, used to dodge attack was always safe against Nabushi's kicks. You could go and go for a guard break, and you might get lighted, or you go for you wait and you light parry, um, which is now harder because they're faster. Um, but now there's a mix-up even between kicking, which is uh, dodge attacking, which is interesting considering the fact that they are. It's I mean they're not very. The kick for most people is somewhat reactable because it's five six six, even with even with the hidden indicator, and especially at the top level. Uh, and now it being safer is a big a big but for it really. 
Um, she's also got improved hitboxes on her everything side heavies now. They're much better, apparently. I've not tried they them myself. Are, but... I have tried them, and I do want to say that it's like... I, I can't think of a hero to compare it to, because they're not as good as JJ's. But uh, in terms of how far they reach around her, they're about as good as JJ's. They don't go as far. But they're really, really good, and it matches the weapon. If you can see her trajectory when I do these side heavies. Yeah. Uh, the trail, the uh, weapon leaves. That's about how good their hitboxes are, and they're really good. So, uh, she's yeah, that's, and they're indulgible as well. So, really yeah. nice Crazy. fight style. Yeah, like Nabushi's one of these weird characters. Like she's got a bunch of kind of crack stuff with the damage, um, where the shock is kind of nuts, and and then her, then her like her kick with this change the way the side dodge, the side um. It only works on the side ones, of course, by the way. So if you go to the top one, it's still gonna, still gonna, um, so you go light into, do you light top kick for me? I oh, know, light into kick and then top light. That's still gonna get hit. Yeah, because that's not a. Because it's not the book, because it's not, it's not the side ones. But, um, it also affects her, th her lights after the throw. If you throw somebody with her, uh, you can light afterwards. And that's guaranteed, and it's got iframes as well, so that's kind of nice. Um, other things, for, other things from Bushi. Anything else? But like, you think she's going to be like uh, second comp material now? Basically, another weird thing is our frames on side dodge light don't always work properly on against top attacks. Weird. Which is a bit weird. So the top heavy. It's really inconsistent. Basically, uh, like that. Like you can't dodge early with them. You really have to dodge really late. So like you would. But they do this. have still a nice delay window, don't they? Yeah, that's good, but like you can so you do can still delay like, if you them, throw a like... side heavy, throw side heavy. I can do it really early. Uh to sort of like option select even. But against top text it doesn't work. Other than that, that is um, weird. Yeah, I mean I think that's it for her. Yeah. Her sidewinders so still work the same. Very little in terms of iframes, but good hitbox, so. Yeah, great hitboxes and uh um yeah. Just extremely strong minion clear. So on and the heavy parries, of course. But well, they did yeah, I think of the recoveries as well, which is it changes a few things, but not nothing. It just makes her more comfortable. Yeah. Um, okay. Next character to look at. I think we might be approaching the end of the ones that are actually a lot to talk about because Nobushi had those those weird things of the the lights being strange. Um, I think we actually are at the end of the character list of the characters to talk about. So the other ones we've got. Well, um, I'm looking at my menu screen. We've got Orochi has got improved. His side heavies are now... I have been kicked out. Oh, my bad. Well, I didn't do anything, so I don't know why. <laughs> oh, I'm apologizing. Um, I'll invite you back in. But... Let's see if I can find you. But Nabushi, uh, whilst, we, whilst you... Yeah, we can send you the invite. Um, not Nabushi. Uh, Orochi's side heavies in chain are now 300... Uh, What? I didn't what? realize I even had an Ethernet cable in. I don't. Um, weird. Nice. Yeah, but you can still hear me, right? Yeah. I'm not disconnected. No, strange. Well, anyway, I think this is probably, in terms of things to show, um, this is probably we've reached the end of that. I can just talk about now. You can show the characters on your screen. Yep. And you won't need me to demonstrate anymore. Just alt tab so we can see the stream. So yeah, so we have the Orochi has got um, 700 millisecond side heavies in chain. They were very good beforehand. They had great hitboxes. Yeah, really now they're unnecessary buff. To be honest. Very very unnecessary. It makes him he was really 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 good in team fights and had a very unique playstyle. Uh, and now he's kind of stupid in team fights. I don't know about that, but I guess yeah. it's a good oh. thing. Yeah. Um, what other things? Uh, so we've got. Itakiri's heavies, charged heavies are 25, uh, used to be 25 stamina because they didn't cost any extra stamina when you carried them, which was a change from the, that got removed in the CCU. Now they are 12 stamina when they're fully charged, which makes sense. What it was, should be. Um, other characters that have been, had like little changes, Jean, like I said, Jean, Nusha's zone is tw 20 stamina. Um, Nusha's zone is a really weird one. It's uh, still. Thousand milliseconds. It's still blockable. It's still kind of weird and not good. But on the other hand, you can also see how if they made it unblockable, it would be basically raider zone with 
a a better parry punish because of the the trap catching parry attempts. Um, so yeah, Nusha is still like I guess is still clearly in need of a big rework, make her traps work more reliably and or do something about that. Um, but yeah, Soon her TM. zone has gone down a lot. Yeah. Soon TM. Soon, yeah. Soon TM. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, Nusha say, hasn't been mentioned at all, but you know. Yes, it. She has. Uh, whoever's in charge of the Froner game Discord, while uh, not Discord, but Twitch, while they stream, replied to a comment in chat and said they haven't forgotten about the trap lady. And that's all we have to go <laughs> off of right now. Yeah, well, they haven't. Um, so well, maybe we'll see something in future Warriors Dens or something. Um, and then yeah, Kyoshin's zone is twenty seven as well. Um, I think Kyoshin's might be thirty. No, I think it's twenty. It was forty to start off with. Um, but, but yeah. you can load up the training ground now if you want. If you want I mean, to see uh, it, but yeah, it really doesn't make that big of a difference. But yeah, um, um, I do wish it was yeah, but... as low as possible because it's it's not like I don't know he doesn't have a hitbox on it. So yeah, that's fair enough. Um, but the one who does have a big hitbox is Jan Hu, who has got a thirty seven zone now. Um, and Jan Hu is already kind of meta character, so. This is a really nice buff for him. Um, yeah. Well, I like. What do you think Jan Hu needs now? Um, um, any other changes? Maybe different paint to garbage timing on other short heavy, so you cannot dodge the whole thing on one timing anymore. Yeah. That's, and that's uh, weak. speed his uh, unbuckables up by like hundred ms, so you can't light out of him safely hundred percent of the time. Yeah. Yeah, I think those are the like two changes. I mean, to be honest, if that happens, he probably also needs to have those, the damage nerfed a little bit on those blockables because yeah, they I are mean, that's fine. I think that's fine. very high. Um, but yeah, Jan, who again is like strongly better character um, with improvements now. That I, I feel like with this chain, with these patches, this patch, uh, so many more characters have become not like what's the phrase? Like they're not necessarily meta themselves. Oh, Berthelian miniature. Interesting. Yeah, somebody they're else like, by the parry. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I, I'm really, really pleased with this this patch in terms of the 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 number of small changes and the overall improvement to the health of the game. Um, and if this is a trend they aim to continue, which I hope it is, with little changes um, that aren't full reworks but are improvements, then we could very soon. I, I don't think we'd need many more than like a few seasons of this kind of stuff to make the balance of this game really really good um like if they i want i'll be interested to see if they start including little nerfs in any of these these ones because this time is all buffs but there you could see one can imagine for example um jj has his heavies are too do too much damage and shinobi does too much damage and have like a crazy crazy ganks and so on It'd be interesting to see if they start doing little tweaks to little nerfs as well, um, which I think would be probably good because, like, you know, nobody ever really likes being having nerfs, but then I don't know people do also like having characters they don't like very much getting nerfed. Uh, obviously, Shinobi hit stun um, needs to have something sorted about his his ganks, but then that's Shinobi's a weird one in that it's a symptomatic of there are lots of other ganks which are also kind of none of them as problematic as Shinobi, but a lot of them are problematic. I think so, it's very easy to fix Shinobi, but they refuse to because of whatever vision they have on the character. But yeah, I mean, there's. Oh, what would you say is your easy fix for Shinobi? Well, obviously they gotta make it so that hit stun does a reset on both kicks that he has and makes the chlorine feed more venge on hit instant. Yeah. That you can't land sixty five of them before they get venge. Yeah, I mean that's a. At least with the the revenge thing, that's a, a change which you we could see in one of these, uh, these patches. Cause, you know, so like, I think they added the revenge to. There's no problem with the hero being really strong in ganks. I mean, we have a lot of like Dent, like Glad, like heroes that have really are really good ganks just shoved in. But um, when we're talking about breaking game and infinite ganks that we've struggled so long to get rid of. Uh, yeah. Yeah, well, hopefully we see them gone um, soon. I feel like they, you know, I think they, they must be aware of uh, the problem that Shinobi is it causes with his infinite yeah. ganks. And um, for people wondering, in competitive play, at least unofficial competitive play, so basically everything other than Ubisoft hosted or sponsored tournaments, Shinobi has been banned. 
from yeah. anything. So uh, we're going to continue like that and try our best to push that to official tournaments if there are any in the future as well, because we do not want the character in his current state anywhere near comp play. Yeah. What would you say would be the minimum needed to allow the character back into comp play? What I just said earlier. Okay, so hit stun hit resetting stun, Hit stun is a must. That's not even a question. Hit stun is a must. And... Um, also, Sikorin, I think, is a must. I mean, it's just... It would be way too hard to mess around with timings and recoveries on it to make mm -hmm. it fixed. So, we just take the easy way, make it feed a lot more Venge, and make it, like... A, make it a really good gank. So, like, a 75-0 to zero gank, if set up yeah. perfectly. Which is Fair what enough. most ganks are nowadays. Don't We don't want yeah. 100 to zeros with... For example, Orochi and Shinobi on any character with, like, literally the easiest setup ever. <laughs> yeah. Um, what do you say? Do you think his kick needs more revenge as well? Like the ranged heavy part, it only does same um, revenge as a... I mean... As a, it counts as a bash, but it's basically... I don't think that's the line. problem. I think the problem is the initial kick, because that's what resets the hits. Though. Like, in a team fight, in a fight, in anything that's not a 1v1, you doing that... Um, ranged punish is just breaking you because you cannot do anything after that other than roll you use a guarantee guard break so people don't even do that but it's just i think the hit stun of you getting hit by the kick without the, the thing is like 800 ms and then if they do the range sickle punish it's like 1100 you're out of the i think it's fight. even more than that actually i want to say yeah, um it's I actually measured this a long time ago i think it's more like 1200 for both of them and then like individually and then obviously adds them on to each other I'm yeah like you're out of a fight for a quarter of a second which is a lot yeah. in a team fight um and I, it, I think it can for be them, done for everything so yeah. yeah i think it's probably quite a difficult thing for them to change because of the frame advantage into like they want the ranged heavy to be able to you, you can hit it and then roll into somebody and then like i said i don't think um, heavy is a problem i think it's just the initial kick yeah but the, the the initial kick needs to be long enough hit recovery that the ranged heavy i mean the ranged heavy is a confirmed punish right you can make that faster yeah but then so that oh yeah i guess so um let's look at the i've got this value here that i can tell you how much the pin for the uh is okay it's about um, one thousand two hundred milliseconds for the for the kick. Yeah, but, but then but, the ranged but, heavy, I think, is oh uh, yeah, five five six six. All right. So basically, there's no real reason for that to be as long as it is. Um, is that is that the ranged heavy? Like we have the... like what his his heavy after backflip kick is like what like two hundred ms, three hundred ms. Uh, it is something along those lines, yeah. Yeah, so like, um, why can we not have the range one as well? But basically, uh, characters banned from comp, and if all goes well, then we will see him banned from comp officially until he gets changed. Um, we are seeing a lot more tournaments coming in. Remember, phase two uh, is coming on 20th of October, uh, which yeah. is mid season. Yeah, mid season, uh, pilot play two. So, so we're going to see this, yeah. Yeah. Crossplay, crossplay really phase two, and finally. There is an influx of tournaments because of it, so keep an eye out if you're interested. Yeah, so there's, there's nothing official has been announced yet, but I, you know, I will let you guys know. If you follow the dojo, you will hear about the official comments as soon as they are announced. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm really, really excited about for the state of balance of the game and how things are going along. Um, there's testing grounds for T Tiandi and Valkyrie are very, very, very promising. And uh, the, the little change for the Garbrick vulnerabilities, the counter Garbrick stuff, which we'll talk about when we do this testing ground Dominion, the dojo, um, is really, really positive. Like, it's a change we've wanted for a long time. It's one of these changes that is a, it requires kind of a high level of understanding of the game in order to realize that it's something important that needs changing. Which is why it's so encouraging to see that the devs are changing it, because it implies that they are paying attention to the like people who really well to to the high level play and like high knowledge level play Ruby, of the game. Listen to me. <laughs> yeah, basically. Um, yeah, no, good good changes. Um, we'll see what this. I'm I am really interested to see what this testing grounds. There, there've been two testing grounds announced this season. There's another one coming. A title update too. 
which is going to be game changes. So I do not know what those are, but like, what, what do you, what do you, do you have any ideas what, what you would like to see as like game system wide changes in the second testing grounds? Uh, it's hard to say because I know things already, so it's like, ah, oh, fair enough. <laughs> yeah. You'd uh, have to be, you'd have to be, you'd have to be pretending the same as maybe I'll, I am. Pretend, hold on. <laughs> I, I, I'll pretend. Hold on, let me think. Uh, what kind of game system changes would you like to see? Just we'll call it that uh, in general. I mean, uh, okay. I just quickly say the the thing we have in TG currently for the guard break. I just want that in live instant. Not even not yeah. second thought about it because it's a <laughs> really good change. Yeah. Um, but what do I want? What do I want? Hmm, 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 hmm. Big question. I don't know. <laughs> Feet, wall, feet, wall feet, collisions. Feet, 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 yeah, feet, big work. I mean, there are certainly still some core issues the game has. Uh, I would say feet's obviously a bigger one of them. I mean, I'm not sure if it's a core issue, but like in terms of the balance of them is really bad. But that needs to be looked at. Uh, a core issue I think the game has is revenge is a bad system, and I think if I could want, if I want to say it, like one big topic that really needs addressing is revenge. Mm. Um, Curious. It has. I would like to hear your argument. Well, I, I, you want to hit? I can. I can I go now, into about no, that, but no, I you know, might take a throw. Yeah, another time. Another time. We'll talk about revenge as a con concept. Um, I think it causes the game to be very sort of at least outnumbered fights to be very, uh, very turn-based feel to them, which I think is not something we really should be encouraging. Um, there's a real. Sh it was a, the last testing ground with the garbage vulnerability changes. It's a real shame that the garbage vulnerability on miss being removed was was added to this testing ground because that was so deeply unpopular and also a bad like you know i think a really bad change as well considering how much of the game it broke but the other changes other than that were really really good like having no garbage vulnerability on chain links or on, on landed finish or blocked lights was so good and i really hope that those things can be that the the negative press of that can be avoided and they can add that back um I just noticed you have 603 steel, Normie. Bro, that's, get a knife. Bad, what you, what? Stop. Shut up, man. <laughs> no, I just, I just like, yeah. Mad because I was spending. What, what's your most recent purchase? Uh, Raider execution. Nice, nice. Anyway, um, I think that's everything we need to cover today. We will do another t uh, dojo on the testing grounds, on the changes from Valkyrie and. TND, I'm not sure when we will, because we kind of want to show off the, want to show off the changes, to, something to show whilst we talk about them. But then, if we do it on a Thursday, that's when the changes on. The testing is only a week long, after all, um, and I'm not still away until Wednesday. Uh, we'll see. Maybe if we'll anything, do it next. Uh, if if we don't have the time, we're gonna have definitely something like, for example, we can get Freeze's video and yeah. talk over yeah. that, yeah. and he'll have. Yeah. A, but we'll, we'll do one uh, that's focused just on that because if we yeah. do want to include both, you can see we've been going for two hours just about this. Yeah, yeah, about the little changes. Um, I don't know, we've taken our time on them, but you know, it's cool. Um, any other questions from chat that we haven't um, seen? Let me have a look at that. Move new back up after the third sickle rain attacks. Uh, well, after three damage sickle rain attacks. Hey, e hmm, weird. I mean, like, Backflip after the second and first and second ones. Certainly, I mean, certainly an issue. Um, we'll see if that changes anything. Um, they load a bunch of the recoveries for... Oh, yes, they load a bunch of Nooshi's Nush recoveries. Um, yeah, I mean, that does improve things, for certain. Just having lower recovery... Having long recoveries in general is always bad for a character. Um, and now, yeah, you're not going to be as punished as much for landing attacks or for missing lights and stuff like that. Um, you have to delay... Cobra Strike for the US I'm going to punish. That's possible you do because the timing on it's changed. Um, I'm not sure if some of the ones used to use her for dodge Cobra Strike as part of the punish, and I'm not sure if those will work anymore. I'll double check all of those. Um, uh, they should work because if if you did it buffered, then it would be too early. So. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. But, uh, I mean, it's only the, the forward Cobra Strike now is. At its fastest, 100 milliseconds slower than it used to be, because it used to be 600 ms and could do it instantly as soon as you press the dodge button. And now it's got a delay window of 200 ms, and but it's 100 ms faster, so that works out to be 100 ms um, difference. 
Right, let's, uh, wrap up. I need to go. Yep, fair enough. Thank you, Normie. Thank you very much for for joining us. Join us when we do this next Dominion, uh, next Dominion, uh, next dojo on testing grounds. We're we'll talking about Valkyrie and Tiandi, which are really interesting stuff to talk about. Um, and yeah, see you then. Thank you very much for for joining us. Goodbye. Goodbye.